Hi guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guide. Thanks very much for joining me today. Um, this might be my last review before Christmas. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'll try and get another one out before Christmas, but um, I just have to, to see. Um, as you can see here, I've got a review of the uh, very, very popular White Knights watercolour uh, pencils. When I say popular, I'm talking about the, the White Knights uh, watercolour pans. They're very, very popular among watercolour artists. Now, um, I was actually given these by somebody, uh, a gentleman called Peter uh, Weatherall, who I'm sure all of you know. Uh, I have an immense amount of respect for him. He is somebody who um, I admire and look up to within the art community and especially in particular the colour pencil community. And um, Peter has got many accolades to his name, achieved many fantastic achievements with his art, his own art, his colour pencil art, that type of thing, uh, watercolour art as well. And he has um, a lot to do with the UK Colour Pencil Society, has been, um, runs his own website where he writes about blogs about pencils, pretty similar to what I do, but Peter's been doing it much, much longer than I have. Uh, his website is penciltopics.co.uk. I'll have a link for that down below. You should definitely go across. If you haven't already done so and check out his website, his website is phenomenal. It has a vast amount of information with regards to uh, colored pencils, watercolor pencils, that type of thing. Um, but, about a month or so ago, maybe a little bit more, Peter contacted me, uh, which was huge in itself. I was really honored that he contacted me, but um, he contacted me and asked me if I would take these pencils that he had purchased and test them and let him know what I thought of them. So I was kind of blown away at that. I, you know, The fact that this man who I admire greatly, have a lot of respect for, uh, he's incredibly well liked person within the community, highly respected in the community as well. He was reaching out to me for kind of like a second opinion, if if you like, uh, and I just uh, was blown away by that. So obviously I said, yes, I would love to. Uh, at the time, Peter had written his own kind of review of these on his website, but I chose not to go across and read it uh, until I'd done my own research and um, testing of them because I didn't want to be influenced by anything Peter had said uh, and I knew that even if I didn't want to I probably subconsciously would have been uh, influenced by some of the things that anybody writes about things which is the reason I don't really look at other review blogs or anything like that uh, especially especially on pencils that I haven't reviewed yet uh, or I'm going to review. So Peter had a few concerns about them. He wanted my opinion on it. And basically, when I got back to him, he never said to me what his concerns were, but I basically echoed those concerns. Uh, one of the Before I actually get inside the box and show you what's going on inside the box, or the, the tin, um, as I mentioned, White Knights are a very popular brand with watercolour painters, watercolour artists. Um, about a year ago, I purchased a, a little small set of White Knights. It was just after I bought a, a slightly larger uh, pan set of Windsor Newton. Uh, and I wanted to try a few other little watercolour sets and the White Knights were one of them. So um, I am very familiar with the uh, quality that the pans are, the White Knight pans are. Um, so I had a reference when I got hold of these and I was expecting big things from them really to be honest given the, the quality I had with the, the pan sets. Uh, one of the biggest disappointments of the pencils uh, I think is when they came to Peter they were wrapped in cellophane and they had a sticker on the cellophane. Now on the sticker in very small writing uh, it it said that these pencils were manufactured in China. Now, what I think one of the big things that a lot of the watercolor artists like about the White Knights is that they are still manufactured in Russia, which is where these uh, 
where this company is from, where all their paints are still manufactured. In fact, if you have a look here on the, the, the back of the tin, you can see uh, it's all Russian writing. Can't make head nor tail of it, with the exception of this little bit down at the bottom here. Watercolour pencils with brush 48 colours, white nights. Uh, and in case you're wondering, because I was for about a month, this is white nights in Russian. Um, I had no clue what this said, which is this here. And for a long time, I was kind of like looking at it going, is, can I? am I just bad at reading? Um, and then it dawned on me finally, not that long ago actually, after it had them about a month and a half, that it's just white nights in Russian. So that's a big concern for me because, as I said, a lot of people like the white nights um, given the quality that comes out of their manufacturing in Russia. So that you would wonder why white knights chose to have these manufactured in, in China. Uh, one of the questions that I also wanted to know was, um, is it another company in China that's manufacturing these pencils? So in, in essence, they're not white knights at all. They're, they're nothing to do with white knights because if they're manufactured by another company, uh, for white knights, then they're not going to have any of the trademark um, appeal that the, the watercolor paint, the, the white knight watercolor paints have to watercolor artists who love them. Uh, I wasn't able to find out any of that information. I did write off the white knights uh, about a couple of things. Um, I haven't heard back from them yet, but if I do, I will update you as soon, as soon as any of that information comes in. So anyway, on with the inf inside of the tin. So as you can see here, this is the 48 set. They come in a set of 12, 24, 48 is the largest set. Now you can see here that inside the set comes a little uh, number five round brush, which is, it's, you know, it's an okay quality brush. I'm not an expert with watercolor brushes or anything like that, but um, it's not one of those cheap, cheap, real, cheap brushes that you get in kids watercolor sets uh, it holds the brush holds the water quite well um, it's a nice brush uh, for starting out and I actually think that I would like to see a lot more watercolor pencil sets come with brushes in them uh, especially yeah, I think like a set of 12 you don't need a brush you possibly you could get away with not having a brush in a set of 24, but anything above a set of 24 or including a 24 set, I think should have a brush in it just to get the artist started. Uh, I don't think that's a big ask. Um, so this is the first layer along the top here. You can see all the yellows, reds, pinks, and then coming into the, the, the purples. And then we got some of the blues, aquas, some browns, and then some cool and warm greys and a black here. Now I have swatched these, I'll show you the swatches in a second. Um, I just want to go through the characteristics of the actual pencil. Um, now a lot of people, or a few people have said over the year, uh, two years that I've done this, uh, a lot of my reviews are very positive. Uh, I've explained that uh, and the people who say that are quite within the rights to say it because a lot of the reviews I do are positive. Uh, I've already explained that. I try to find the right paper. I do believe that there is a, a certain surface for a certain product that will make the product work well. Um, I think on the other on on this occasion, but this review is not going to be as positive as uh, some of my other ones. And th this is the first thing. So, if you have a look at the pencil, it looks really really nice. It's um. It's got the, the wood grain shown here. It's a Californian cedar wood, which a lot of pencils are made out of. Um, it's a 7.2 millimeter barrel and it's a 3.2 millimeter core. So it's kind of like one of the slimmer watercolor pencils that I've tested, but it's not, you know, it's not really, really skinny. It's not really chunky. I tend to find that pastel pencils and watercolor pencils are tend to be uh, a lot chunkier than just your ordinary run of the mill color pencils. Um, this kind of like would fall into the range of an ordinary color pencil, I think. Um, so you, you do have this, I mean, it looks very attractive, this natural wood grain. Uh, then on the very end here, we have a pigment identifier. Um, and as with many pigment identifiers, they don't really match the actual pigment in the pencil, but it does give you kind of like a, a quick visual 
aid of getting the, the, the color that you want. This silver band here is purely decorative just to um, have a, a clean edge between the, the pigment identifier and the, the barrel. Now along the pencil there is absolutely no information whatsoever with regards to the pigment or uh, numbers or anything at all like that. It just says on the pigment identifier white knights in that Russian writing that you've seen at the beginning uh, on the front of the tent. Now I'm, I'd, personally I don't really care about having uh, pigment names wrote on pencils so long as there's a pigment name or a number, something to correspond to it. Because when I get a set of pencils, I always do um, like my own swatch. But there's nothing at all on these pencils. And here's where the problem comes. So let me, let me show you this. So when I get uh, a set of pencils, I will do uh, a dry swatch in this little, this is one of the, the Windsor Newton visual journals. Uh, it's a watercolor one, it's 140 pound hot press. Uh, but I would do like a dry swatch uh, and then I would turn over and uh, do a wet swatch so then activate it. Just, it gives you a, an idea as to the, the colors dry and wet. But here's the issue with these pencils not having any identification marks on them. If you take these pencils out and you put them in a jar or something like that, which a lot of colour pencil artists do, or you even put them in a drawer or something like that, somewhere where they're going to be loose, they're going to be rolling around, you're not going to know. You can do all the swatching you want, but if I'm looking for this colour here, you know, I'm going to have to grab a few pencils and put it down and try and find the exact colour. Uh, un unless you keep them in the tin, you make sure that you never th put them back out of the order that they had come in, which is going to be, you know, problematic in itself. Um, or the other the other route you can go down is, so, um, so this is the first, the first red on the swatch. So what, what you could do, I suppose, is uh, create a number for this and then write the number on the barrel or sellotape it on, you know, get a piece of paper, get some clear sellotape and put it around. But again, that's a lot of trouble that you're going to for a set of pencils that you've already paid money for. The last thing you want to be doing is doing something like that. Right, you know, come on, coming up with swatches is, for some people, a pain in the backside in any case without having to start you know, marking the pencils and trying to uh, get some sort of uh, connection with them. So I think that's a, a big downside with these pencils. So, so far we've got like the fact that they're made in China and now this as well. So not doing too well so far. Um, so let me put this, uh, this swatch journal away. Now when I was testing them, when I was going through them, I tested them on about four or five different papers, three different brands, I think it was. I had Canson, Strathmore, and the, um, the Derwent uh, watercolor paper as well. In fact, it was four, because I had a, an Arteza watercolor pad as well, so I tried them in that. Um, I just could not get these pencils, the pigment, they just didn't work. I did do some artwork. In fact, I'd done two small bits of artwork, I gave up halfway through, it just wasn't coming out. Um, I just could not get deep enough colors with these pencils. So uh, I'm gonna show you that now. So, okay, so I'm gonna, the testing that I'm gonna do is in uh, a Dale O'Reilly, uh, and it's a rough watercolor paper, 140 pound. I've used this one because um, when you see how, how weak the, the pigment is, in the pencils, I want you to understand that I've used uh, a rough paper to, to grab hold of as much pigment as possible. Okay, so um, I've got a few different pigments here and when I'm doing this testing, uh, I'm gonna be putting down uh, really, really heavy applications so that you can see uh, that I am doing my best here. Now, some of the pigments worked okay uh, they, they were strong enough, but 
some of them, the, like this uh, flesh one. Now, um, you can see here that when you put it down dry, it's, uh, it's the, the pigment is definitely visible. It's not, there's no big, big issues or anything like that with it. Um, I've got this nice red here. Uh, purple. Uh, I'm going to have to go below this for this uh, blue. Now it's crumbling here a little bit. I, I wouldn't say that that's to anything to do with the pencil. It's more to do with me. I'm putting really, really heavy pressure on this uh, to just so that I can get a decent decent amount on the um, on the paper and, and test it out so I've got the the water here and yes. So now I'm under the green. A bit too much water there. But you can you can see, I mean like I'm not I'm not moving that out an awful lot. And but you can see that the the, the pigment is kind of it, it's almost like it's just disappearing as soon as water hits it, as opposed to moving about. Now this one here is is the worst. Uh the, the lighter shades are Terrible in my opinion. I'm not moving this around. It's, it's the pigment is staying in the same place um, So it shouldn't be disappearing like that. I'm not thinning it out. I'm not stretching it or anything like that. I'm not um, Trying to cover a large area with it and that's why it's doing it A bit too much water on there You see, um, let me have a lot less water on this one. This was one of the better ones, but even here, I'm not, I'm not covering really. I'm all I'm doing is wetting the the pigment, uh, and that's it. I'm not actually painting with it because if I was painting with it, I would be trying to pull it out. And you can see there, just how light this goes when you activate it with water. And that's not a huge area. That's, I'm not, I haven't covered a huge area there with that. Um, and then when I was when I was actually doing the artwork and stuff like that, you know, you were come. I was coming in, l letting it dry and coming back in, trying to uh, deepen the the colors. It it just wasn't working. Every, no matter what I did, everything just looked washed out. Uh, it just looked like I was putting so much water on it and each time I was doing it. Now I'm not a watercolour artist so I'm sure I'm doing something wrong here. Um, you see you can see that black. It's it's behaving a lot better than any of the other colours that I've just tested is. In fact, that, that is definitely the, the best the best out of them all uh, in terms of that. Now, I'm going to do another. Um, I have the uh, Karen Dash. Palette board here. Um, I've. Done a review on this before. Um, there we go. I'm going to use this, just let me move that up a little bit there for you. Uh, I'm going to do um, 
I'm going to try blending these two colors. Just let me zoom out a little bit. So I've got this yellow. You can even see here that the, the and I've got this blue and hopefully we'll be able to make a relatively nice green with this but you, it just I don't know it, I don't know whether there's um, a lot of filler in these uh, and just and they're just not very pigmented um, but it's I mean, you can see there that that has mixed really quite well. And it's it's brought up a nice green. But you can see there, even on the palette, it, it just seems to be fading away. To lift this off now, and just let me put a little tiny bit of water. To lift this off now and use it, actually, it's this is giving a, a better result than, than actually... Um, using it directly on the paper so i would say to anybody if you really wanted to get these pencils that using a palette like this is probably the best way of applying the pigment and making sure that it stays but then a lot of people say well if, if you're going to do that with these watercolor pencils if you're going to go and get a palette like this and, and use it like that what you, you might as well just get the pans uh because it, that's essentially how you're painting uh, watercolor pencils are supposed to give you another dimension to watercolor pans or whatever um, but that's that's by far the, the the richest color that I've got from these pencils and it's using the palette and it's mixing two pigments together you can see here now that these have dried just let me uh, zoom in a little bit for you I will have um, images of this over on the art gear guide where you'll be able to take a much closer look at so you can see there that the the pigments themselves have just faded with the exception of the the black uh, it's definitely the, str the the better pigment which I know you would expect, but nevertheless, the other pigments are just, I think, and this green here um, that was mixed on the palette has come out really quite nice. So other than that, my experience with these White Knight pencils uh, was not a favorable one. I did try to use them on many different papers, that type of thing. It, I just couldn't get, um, a paper that was pulling off enough pigment and and giving me enough pigment to work with whenever I was trying to do some artwork. Um, I mean, it gets up to you guys. Take a look at what I've wrote down, uh, my findings, and you take uh, also as well. Go and have a look at other people's reviews. See if anybody else comes up with something different to what I've said here. I might be missing something with them, but. With all the tests I've done, they, they just haven't worked very well at all. Uh, so I, I apologize for that, guys. But I have to give these reviews as honestly as I can. Uh, in terms of Lightfast information, because I know that'll be a question, I couldn't find any Lightfast information about them. I have wrote to the company. They haven't got back to me yet. Uh, as soon as they do, or if they do, I will update uh, the Art Gear Guide uh, website where I have my written review of these. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. And if I don't uh, get another review out before Christmas, I wish you all a fantastic Christmas and Happy New Year. Bye.